Get off the marketing roller coaster and get on the automated fast track to digitally market your brand everywhere now. Join podcast producer Tom Hazard and Inc. columnist Tracy Hazard as they share easy content building formulas and smart cut secrets proven to fuel hundreds of blogs, podcasts, and brands with bingeable original content. Join the conversation on how to get your message out to the world. Be original. Be heard. Promote with power and purpose. Feed your brand. Hey, everybody. We are back. So uh, we got a, a, a really interesting topic today, and it's thought-provoking. It borderlines on controversial or controversy or avoiding controversy, potentially. I mean, or there's, tapping into it. There's a, a tapping into it. There's a lot to unpack here, really. Right. And, okay, uh, so first things first, we are not making any political commentary. We're no. not making any social commentary. That is not who Tom and I are. It's not what we're about here. What we do want to say, though, is that there are considerations and there are things going on in the world today and yesterday um, because this is following Black Tuesday. So we're having issues that you all are having to deal with and saying, do I post today? Do I not post today? What do I do? Right. And so we want to address that from a strategic standpoint and from a business standpoint, because here's the thing. Look, one of the strategies is to take a look at this from a strategic fundamental, who you are and how you show up in the world. So I'm going to start with that from us and then why we're bringing this to you today, but why we haven't changed our overall strategy to what we are doing and the rest. Like we had a um, a, a masterclass yesterday and we kept with it. We didn't block it. We didn't stop it. We didn't do anything like that. Well, and we considered, we talked about it, Tracy and I, and it's like, well, you know, this is now what they're calling Black Tuesday and, you know, support for Black Lives Matter. We're very supportive of that in principle, but the reality is, um, were we going to change and not publish our masterclass, which we had sent emails out about for weeks, you know, to our list about that we were going to do this on this day. Do we, do we change the schedule? Do we change what we're doing or do we continue on? Or even if we're going to do it, do we need to make a live stream post ahead of time sort of explaining why we're going to continue to do it? I mean, there were lots of things. we. There considered. are lots of considerations and you all are pondering this. And many of you have been pondering it as you're trying to decide, should I address COVID? Shouldn't I address COVID? Should I start a new show with it? Should I do a new series? So that's what we want to, we want to take a look at this though, from the strategic standpoint, what is this doing for you? What is it doing for your business? Are you technically also, because that's how we show up in the world, making sure that you don't make technical mistakes that hurts you later, right? We don't want to make the mistakes that are uh, that cause harm to us when we're trying to do good in the world, right? Like we don't want to have those two things happen. So that's how we're going to address it today. So the first thing first is I want you to, we're going to walk you through a little bit of our thinking in the process so that you have a sense of how to maybe process this for yourself. So Tom and I clearly know who we are to you, our audience, whether it's on our podcast show, it's our coaching clients, it's all of you here, our done for you clients, right? We know our job and our role within that, it's our mission, right? And our mission is to be obsessively focused on you as a podcast host and making sure that you're getting the most from your content and the most value returns, rewards, monetization, whatever that is. That is our job to show up for that, okay? And on the side of that, our impact into the world is to make sure that all of your voices get heard. So when we talk about black voices, Latinx voices, whatever that is, we, our job is to make sure that you know how to get your voice out there. And so that's how we show up in the world. So we don't show up by not voicing, right? We show up by supporting voicing. So it, so taking a look at yesterday and saying going black and going silent, I understand the powerful message to that, but it's also against what we stand for here. Not the message of supporting Black Lives Matter, not supporting Black voices. That's not what we're against here. We're, we're for supporting that. And yesterday, 
our masterclass was on advanced referrals and how to get referrals for your business and how to keep your business growing. And that's also in making sure that your voices are heard and your voices get out there so that you're seen, heard, found. Like that's fundamental to who we are. So for us not to show up to make sure that we do that consistently and constantly was a consideration for us. And so we, it weighed heavily on us. And, you know, I, I have to be you know, really frank about this, that I grew up in South Africa at the height of our apartheid, 1978 and 1979. And I'm really dating myself now. You all know how old I am. And I, you know, was a child there. So it was like growing up in the 60s and I saw violence and anger and bombings. And at some point, my parents had to send us out of the country and to live with our grandparents for four months before they could come home from the assignment and job that my dad was on because it was so violent in the cities and we were, we were close enough. And so, you know, looking at that is that I understand it at a fundamental core level of both the need for it, the power for it, of it, and the necessity to shifting change. So from that, I want to support things, right? Like I, I, I get the powerful getting your message out there, but I also know my role. And so that's the strategy piece that we're looking for, right? What's your role? What's your support factor? What's your audience and what do they need the most from you? And is it taking a stand and making a powerful message? Then go do that. But if it is showing up and doing the hard work, is it showing up and, and uh, you know, giving them tools? Then show up and do that. Because wherever you can give them something of value, then give them that. Because that's really at the end of the day going to shift make bigger impact, make bigger movements. So that's our fundamental core thing that I want you to think about from a strategic standpoint. Does this matter for my audience in terms of me taking the stand? Does it also matter at the soul to me, right? To me personally. And that was the second part of what I was bringing up there is that sometimes we cannot, our business choices and our personal choices have to be two different things. And we have to take a stand because and, we feel very strongly about it, right? Well, and it's it's really, social media has complicated these issues so much. I used to keep, Facebook was like my personal social media platform. This is going back, oh my gosh, it's going back uh, at least 12 years. Facebook was personal and LinkedIn was business. And I didn't mix the two. But over the years and being in business, those lines got blurred at least five, six years ago. And I came to the realization that I cannot uh, refuse to connect with people I'm in business with on Facebook. And so you know, that, that, that passed long, long ago. But so in some ways though, I have people from my personal life back from high school and even grade school that I'm connected with on Facebook that I communicate with differently than I do obviously people in business. And so that's, that's a consideration too for each of you individually and personally is your you know, social media mixed between business and, um, and personal or is it, can it be strictly one or the other? Um, so that, that plays into it also. Right. And, and when you're talking about that is that you can make a personal stand, um, you know, people change their profile photos, things like that. Those are powerful personal stands and you can absolutely do that. But if your job is to show up and to, to provide content and to do the things that you do, that consistency and constancy is really important to audiences. So what we know is that when we show up week after week after week, that we are making sure that all of you are supported when you're sitting back worrying about those questions. So if we went black, today because your coaching call happened to happen on Tuesday and we went black and didn't support you as you're struggling to deal with whether or not you should comply and you should do this or you should support that, then we haven't served you well just by making a stand and a statement. So that's why we made the choices that we made. And, you know, I'm not going to apologize for them. They were our choices and these are going to be your choices and you shouldn't have to apologize for them either, right? Um, and that's the great thing about being here in America, right? We have free speech. We get to make these choices, right? Well, you know, and to that <laughs> point, Tracy, it, uh, hopefully it's obvious or clear to all of you who are, are watching us or listening to us here that Podetize is a safe space of free speech. Podcasting is a wonderful medium where you can publish everything, anything you want. And the FCC is not going to care or pay attention. There is no regulatory body that is going to restrict what you want to say on your podcast. The content of what you want to say. Right. They can restrict it if you don't comply with the ratings rules, right? Well, but or, other than that. Or 
putting profanity in the title of your show they won't let you do right i mean that's that's more of a platform issue like apple and people like that but we are here content, not going to shut you down right the, right and the content of what you say in each episode you are free to say anything you want and i fundamentally believe in that right whether i like what you post or not or disagree with it does not matter well you know what you what you podcast on yeah I completely believe you can publish anything you want. So the podetize is Switzerland in that sense, a very safe space right. for publishing. That doesn't mean content. though that the dis directories out there are. So keep that in mind. It's just like Twitter. So there was a really interesting um, post on Twitter today is that someone went in and created a, an account that mimicked exactly what the president um, uh, tweets. So it was exactly the same tweet. Just auto retweeting? No, no, it wasn't no. a retweet. They would copy and paste the exact oh. same thing into their profile and see if they got shut down. Ooh, did and they? They did, yeah. Oh. And, they, and they're going to keep doing Man. it every, every week. They're doing new ones and they're seeing what happens within how long it takes them to get reinstated and everything. But so far, everything that they've retweeted got blocked um, uh, just and they got delisted. So every single time that has happened so far. So keeping in mind, we're ordinary people. Twitter has a statement about presidents and heads of state qualify under a different type of category. We don't here. All of us as podcast hosts do not. So we do, if the, if the platform itself or the directory itself, who's distributing it out to the world in your message, they have a right to shut you down if they get complaints and they or will they shut you down and ask questions later. And if you're, if they believe you're not in compliance with whatever their rules or guidelines are. Right. Basically. And we right. can't do anything about that on your behalf. I mean, we, we can, we, we can, can advocate for, for you. you. We can communicate with them on your behalf. If we think that they've erred in their decision based on their policy, certainly. Right. But, and, and for a lot of times that does happen because they, they take you down and ask questions later. Right. You know, yeah. and some of them don't even have an ask questions later. Like Facebook is really difficult with that. Right. But I, I, iTunes, I find or Apple is very, right. very easy to re resubmit and fix whatever's wrong. And mm -hmm. usually they're really good about that. So, but just keep in mind that we don't control that here at Podetize. Your voice is still out there. Your audio file is still there. It exists. Exists. It's going out on your website. It's going out to everywhere that leaves you listed. But if iTunes decides to block you, or Apple Podcasts decides to block you, you are blocked, right? You are you are not reaching out there. A platform has that decision. We do not here. So keep that in mind that those things are, are a part of the strategy. Speaking of like tactical and technical things, that's why I was kind of bringing up the Twitter thing. I wanted to make sure that you guys understand that sometimes there are technical consequences. And that's our job here to show up and remind you of what they are so that you're making an informed choice. So it isn't just a choice of, do I want to support the movement by doing this? But you might actually be causing detrimental damage to your overall marketing plan and, and mission and message that you've been working on for so long by making choices like that. So there are two things. Tom, first, I want you to talk to me about the article that you read about what happens when we put all black squares into Instagram oh. feeds and other things. So this is, goes to a fundamental understanding, and I'll pipe in and, and talk about that, the hashtagging right. importance, okay? Well, so this is, this is not about your um, podcast or your SEO or your, you know, your visibility in the charts on, you know, Apple or anything like that. This is about social media. So uh, there was an article that came out yesterday because everybody had been changed. Everybody is an uh, over, overly broad. An awful lot of people had been changing their profile pictures to just be black and then would hashtag Black Lives Matter and, you know, other related hashtags. And the article was not making a political, um, a political, uh, taking a political stance or was not um, trying to promote any sort of ideology or agenda. What it was really raising awareness about the reality of the computer algorithms that are in control of what we all are fed in our feeds on our different social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. And what they're saying is that by so many people putting black as their a black image as their black. as their yeah. profile picture and hashtagging Black Lives Matter, it actually did a significant disservice, unintentional, but did a significant disservice to the movement because there are people that monitor 
Black Lives Matter in their feeds all the time or in Twitter? The and, hashtag. And the hashtag so right. this is a journalistic technique, right? When you're trying to monitor a topic, especially if it's your beat, right? As to use an old journalistic term, but it's your beat or whatever. So I would do that occasionally if I was writing about innovation or something like that. I would use the hashtag technical innovation or technology innovation or other things like that. And I would use that hashtag. Um, or AI innovation, I would use that to find information quickly. So what happens is, is when you're hashtagging Black Lives Matter in this particular case, or you're hashtagging COVID-19, okay, and all you get is black, you don't get any information to be able to utilize. So the people who are putting out legitimate information about what's going on in a particular city is being buried under the inundation of the black images. And so right. it it's was hard to clogging, find information. It was clogging up the hashtag and all the feeds and information with, yes, we understand a lot of, you know, empathy and support for the cause on that day yesterday, but it really hurt the actual, you know, dissemination of information to those that use those hashtags in in the way that most people do right. to monitor that type of information. So it, it had right. so, a negative impact. So to use COVID-19 as an example, what has happened is, is that there's so many people who post hashtag COVID-19, even though because they want to tap into the trend of it. So they're being opportunistic about it. So their episode really isn't all about that in, the, in a podcaster sense. Their episode isn't about it. There's no health experts. There's no real opinion. It's just that we're talking about it, right? And so you put hashtag COVID-19 in the bottom of it. What happens is, is that uh, Google has had to shift their algorithm. Like they've had to degrade anyone who uses the COVID-19 unless they come from a legitimate medical source, government agency or something like that. So it's not even actually serving you from a technical standpoint because an inundation and use, oh, a misuse of a hashtag for those purposes actually don't do you any good at the end of the day. So you think you're tapping into a trend and the reality is, is your voice isn't being heard anyway. And so thinking about how how you're doing it, use it when it's legitimately important for a searching capability. And now you're really, you're doing your business and your listeners a, a service to be able to actually find it because otherwise you're just buried anyway. Well, now Tracy, let's talk about a, a choice that a lot of podcasters have been, you know, faced with or have been considering. And that is, do I pause, you know, uh, publishing new podcasts because of unique circumstances around COVID-19 and the stay-at-home orders and people being out of work? Do I publish more episodes? Do I address and, and you know, podcast on more topics specifically related to COVID-19? That's been a, a, we've heard a lot of those questions. And yeah, and, and you may consider the same thing under a Black Lives Matter model, uh, you know, as to sure. what you, how you want to address it. It depends on your show, of course, and, and what you're doing. So we want to be really supportive of you um, and how you do that. You know, um, uh, the, there's a couple of podcasters out there who have, uh, whose shows are not about that subject, right? We had the two podcasters at the Athlete Times Media. One's a cop. White Tiger. White I'm Tiger, not, thank yeah, you. Yes, yeah, White yeah. Tiger. So the two hosts of White Tiger, one's a former uh, white police officer and one's a black NFL, a former NFL player. And they, they work together. Now, there's synergy together to working through what happens after you leave your industry that you worked in for so long and you have passion about and you love. And they're supportive of each other wow, what power could they have? Even though it's not what their show's about. Their show's is about sports and commentary about that and, and about transition, right? But what power could they have? They may make the choice that's right for them, but they may say, I want to shift and talk about this. Perfectly relevant for them because of their backgrounds, because of their history, because of how they are together, right? Great idea for, for making that shift. But if Tom and I were all of a sudden to shift to talk about healthcare, when our show is about how to podcast, right? Is that the right thing for us to be doing, even if we care passionately about it well, and what we do? Maybe so, only to the extent that we're talking about it right now about, you know, hey, we've got a lot of podcasters wondering about should they publish relevant to COVID-19 more or less or otherwise, right? Right, and so that's where I say shift your language, right? Don't shift your show, shift your languaging, being sensitive to this, but also remember, right? <laughs> <laughs> that bingeability happens. So the other side of that though, is, is that when you're looking at shifting your language and not shifting your entire show, 
if it becomes something that becomes a regular occurring thing, that's great, but it has to be evergreen at the end of the day because one day we won't be in mid COVID, right? A year from now. And I don't want my shows to be, to, to not be bingeable anymore, right? To not be something of value in the future. So when we use that language, we'll say COVID-19 or the trend for more people to work from home, which is going to continue. So we're referencing the event, but we're using it off as a jumping off point. Now we, we used to do this a lot on our 3D print show. Unfortunately, things would happen like um, we would have shootings and with there, yeah, shootings or there were things in the news about the, you know, what is it? The ATF classifying 3d printed weapons or banning them or things like that. So there were very touchy subjects. Right. But they were also timely subjects. So like mm. we wanted to address them, but we needed to put it in a context of like how you look at that, because what happens the next time something gets confiscated or they change the law or, and it yeah. completely reverses everything, right? No, it was the bump stocks. The bump was a big stocks, one Because yeah. there were a lot of 3D yeah. printed bump stocks after you could no longer buy them and they were banned. And they ended up banning them even if you print them yourself. So anyway, it ended up, it was a touchy stuff to talk about because we were trying very hard not to make a political statement or, or take a political stance, but talk about the impact. But, know, but here's the, the industry. case of what happened. So, my sister was out Route 91. She, she managed to escape with her life. She was very stressed and traumatized, and it was awful. My family's from Newtown, Connecticut. So, like, guns were a sensitive subject matter for me, right? And I, we have, you know, our brother-in-law owns guns, and he's in Colorado, and he's a hunter. And we, rec we, you know, so all around, we were torn over the subject as well. But to not address it on our show, because it was a political hotspot, wasn't good for our show. So we decided to address it, but we decided to address it in a way that was authentic to Tom and Tracy, that pointed out the sensitivity of our own viewpoint on it and the sort of transitioning of our own viewpoint on it over time because mm -hmm. of the events that had occurred. And we did that. And here's what really interesting that happened is our, our listeners responded really well. We never had any kind of nasty comments about it or any kind of, I mean, there'd be the occasional people who would point out, you know, where you could find the gun, the 3D print gun, you know, libraries or whatever. And yeah, so, the, you know, not my favorite thing, print, but yeah. they have a right to post that. And I, you know, we weren't going to argue with that. But th then what, what happened though, is that one time we had, we were working with this agency and they posted something that was kind, it wasn't, how I say it was clickbaity. But it had something about guns in it. And you know what? Our listeners noticed. Yeah. And they started tweeting to us and messaging us on wherever it was posted across social media, messaging to us and saying, hey, Tom and Tracy, I think you got hacked. Because this would not be you Because we would, that. they knew our voice. They knew what we our would viewpoint. tend to post or not. And it wasn't in alignment with that. And they were right. They were right. So and we, we appreciate had it, it and we took it down. We took it down and we fired the agency, right? Like that's what we did because obviously they didn't get it and our audience did. So this is where you showing up and being authentic to who you are, to your messaging and doing what you do when you don't then do something that they want you to do. That's also important. They're going to reach out and touch you. So if you have an ability to soothe people, to help them through transition periods, and you don't go and address maybe the stress going on during COVID-19 or the loneliness, and it is in your subject matter, then they're going to notice that too. So please make sure that you're thinking carefully and strategically about your show at all times. And if it needs to shift, it needs to shift. Now I'll tell you fundamentally what we have seen now that we've got a couple months behind us of, you know, people working from home more being forced to and all that. We have seen a trend of listenership going up overall with few exceptions, but in general listenership is up. It seems that people are wanting, uh, are, are, have been longing for more human connection. And uh, so it's been a really good time to reach people. And, you know, we've had uh, been the opinion, hey, we're, we're not going to stop our publication schedule. Why would we stop? We're going to continue. If anything, we've published more during this time. <laughs> and, um, and, and I'm going to give you an example of another uh, customer. I was actually right over Tracy's head. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't even, uh, I can't do it from here. Which one? On this side, business done differently. The yellow one. Oh my gosh. It's down just here. like trying to, right there. trying to do something uh, with no, yourself no, no, in I, the mirror. Go there, right there, right it's there. The bright yellow one by my head. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> Jesse Cole, Business Done Differently, he's the owner of a minor league baseball team in Savannah, Georgia, called the Savannah Bananas. And, and, and he's really cool, by the he's way. He's a great guy, <laughs> really but his podcast is about business, not his baseball. Actually, he has two. There's another, uh, there's another podcast more specifically about the baseball team. And he not, you know, his business business was really negatively impacted. You know, nobody in the stands, no baseball season, well, he no made, revenue. He made going to minor league. I mean, that's just the innovation that he brought. He made going to minor league baseball games exciting and fun again. And people and wanted to do. And the stands. He has a very, very good business. Now, right. of course, it's been really harmed by no sports, no gatherings of more than 10 people and all that. But he um, decided uh, in early May, I forget, I think it were late April, I forget, he recorded a series of podcasts, five of them, specifically related to business, how, Im how it's impacted by COVID-19, and uh, put out one per day in this special bonus series of episodes for a week. Um, and it, he felt it was the right thing to do for him and his business and for, you know, his mission with his podcast. And, and so, well, and, and listeners want to hear that. that, right? Yeah. Like, this is what I guarantee you is his, his core value listeners know what he's done and understand he's got to be struggling here. What is he doing? I want to know, right? And so him by him putting that series out, but kind of segregating it the way that he did is a great way to do it because, you know, because he wanted to, to make it right. He didn't do it immediately. He waited till he had good information to share and then he put it out there. Other things that I just want to point out because we do have some technical things that there are others who have their, their production schedule is already way ahead in advance. Um, they... Uh, have their episodes going out and they don't want to appear insensitive. Ah, we have had so some people we had, do yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, and so by adding a little advertisement clip, by using our ad mixing system, they were able to add in a little ad piece that says, hey, everyone, I know that a lot of you are sheltering in place right now. And, you know, and experiencing some tough experiencing times. Experiencing some whatever. tough times. And, you know, this episode was recorded two months prior to that. So we don't discuss it at all. But I really wanted you to still hear this because this is someone successful who you can learn from. And, and maybe that's going to really help you through this hard times. But I wanted you to know that it's different. So they're referencing the fact that it was recorded in a different time and space. Well, and right? I think doing what is a, a, a lesson that, um, you know, has, was recommended to us, you know, many years ago in Business Tracy. And that is when there is a obvious elephant situation in the room. <laughs> you've got to address the elephant in the room do not ignore it or pretend it's not there just address it and you're being more real with people so i like how some of our podcasters have been doing yeah. that either by creating a new intro for their show or like you said just adding in a little segment using our ad insertion system right after the intro and before the main episode starts saying this that then later on a couple months from now when it's all blown over that that can be removed and at that future point in time, people aren't going to think, oh, this was published right in the middle of COVID-19. Right. They can take it out. Oh, you know what? Like we we should also mention to those of you using the DIY system, you can use the intro, outro, auto ad to do that. So you would yeah, load sure. up that special thing as an extra intro and you can check the button and automatically add it to the very front right. before, before your whole show plays. So you can utilize that on the DIY side as well. And if you guys need help with putting these things in, please reach out to our team. We've been doing it for other podcasters and we're happy to help you do that because it makes your show uh, more relevant to your audience. And we want that because that will attract more listeners. Um, the, the, I want to go back to what you were saying about the listenership growth on the platform. So mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of interviews with many, many podcasters. And one of the, th uh, the interviews I just did today, which won't air for a couple of weeks, but I interviewed Dr. Mark T. Wade, who is Virtual Summit Podcast, the Virtual Summit Podcast. He and I mentioned Scott Carson, who was on his show as well. And Scott was mentioned in his, in his uh, recap of one year anniversary episode. So I was oh, like, wow. oh, actually, a couple of our clients were mentioned in there. Don Fossett, you were mentioned as well. So, you know, there's a couple of you guys out there who have been on his show. So the Virtual Summit podcast. And it's really interesting because this is something that when I went to go look at the status, the ratings and stuff, he was saying when he first started the podcast, which was a, a, a year and a couple months ago, okay, mm -hmm. or about a year and a month ago, when he started it then, there were no other podcasts on virtual summits. 
but when now I pop up mm. and there's like everyone and their brother has a podcast about virtual summits. Wow. And I mean, an entire show on it, not just like, not, an not episode. just an episode, right? Like show. they're everywhere, right? Mm. There's shows popping up left and right. He started a trend. But you know what? The spike in his traffic, because he already has 150 episodes, and this is what we're seeing consistently. 150 episodes in a year. So he's been Producing committed. Them. He's been doing like three a week. He's been then. doing two to three a week. Yeah, ah, he does. He does two him. to three a week. So he's really committed to it. And, and it shows, and the content is fabulous and well-informed, but it is for his business. He has a software as a service called Virtual Summit Software. And so, you know, so thinking about that is that that's powerful and it is working. But the ones who are popping in and popping out or don't have the background in history, didn't have the platform before, it's not happening at the, at the steady. It's not like all of a sudden there's a spike in listeners and they're listening arbitrarily to any show that shows up. No, they're not like that. They're specifically listening and they're still being discerning about the shows that they choose. And so this is the episode that I also want to highlight for you on The Binge Factor. I interviewed Jennifer Otto and it's, so I think, last week's episode. Um, Jennifer Otto was, is a binge listener. She's not a, um, she's not a host, not a podcaster, right? right? So I interviewed a binge listener to get her perspective and she clearly goes through the outline of how she decides if she's going to listen to a new show. Wow. And, That's cool. and honestly, one of the things she said is like, and she confirmed what I've been saying for so many years now is that if I don't see, if I really want to deeply learn about something, like I'm really, I want to learn how to virtual summit. I want to learn today because I don't have time. I want to crash course it. I'm going to pick a podcast that has a minimum of 25 episodes or more, right? And That's so what we she thought. confirmed that. Some people and so do, yeah. this is where you just starting up or you switching to a new show, like switching completely to a brand new show might be a mistake right now. And so in terms of addressing only something that's COVID-19, right? Or, you know, it's, it's one thing to address a broader subject, but to only address in that, I'm going to go to the more tried and true longer. And that's what listeners are going to do too. So keeping consistent with that is really, really important. Um, and Jennifer Otto has some great, so she gives great shout outs to Jen Duplacis, which is um, Jen's podcast is um, uh, about real estate. Yeah. And mortgage uh, lending mastery as one, but she has two. She yeah, has but this is, she, the other one hasn't launched yet. So, okay, okay. so I asked uh, Jennifer Otto, there's two Jens, so it got confusing, but I asked her, I said, we, so ha have you listened to every one of Jen's episodes? She said, absolutely. I have. And I said, well, now when Jen starts up her new show, even though it's not about real estate, are you going to listen to it? And she said, absolutely. So there is a power mm -hmm. in terms of if you have the binge listeners, for them to come to a new show with you. But remember, it's the general listenership. If you were expecting that launch boost, it's not there. So your binge listeners will come with you. So one of the things we technically we recommend is doing, you know, what, what you were talking about, about business done differently, is that doing a series within your own show. And right. then if you want to spin it off later right, into, its own. into its own thing, do it that way. You're going to have more power to it. Right. And, and you can even leave it in your normal show feed. It can stay there forever. But if you have a special series, you can highlight it and move it over into its own so that people newly finding your show that really just want to binge through that subject area that, that is focused in a really a micro niche of your genre can do that easily. And why not? It doesn't cost you anything to put it out that way. No. And we have multiple feeds here, so you can do That's it when I mean. you're ready. It yeah. It's like your, nothing. Yeah. So the last thing I just want to say from a technical standpoint, and then we'll go to questions and we'll move on to where we are there is that, but the last thing I want to say on that is that um, when you disrupt your consistent and constant plan, right? When you're, when you're being consistent, you're posting every week at a specific time. And, you know, for those that were on Tuesday, it was an unfortunate choice to be making for many of you to decide, do I not air something because the musicians are going off air? Do I not air my podcast on Tuesday? We didn't have to make that choice. It's because ours are Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays. We're later in the week. No, I so have a podcast that published yesterday. Did I have you? an episode. I didn't think you did. <laughs> I did. I thought we were on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. No, different show though. Okay. Um, the show I'm doing oh, with Bill doing Sterling. Yeah, yeah. So that one published on Tuesday. But here's the thing: even though we publish it on Tuesday, doesn't mean people listen to it on Tuesday. It gets pushed to their phone, their device. They might get to it Wednesday, Thursday, or not next weekend. To me, as a podcaster, it's very different than if you're like the Tonight Show, like last night Jimmy Fallon went on. 
and his intro was just voiceover, no music, because the it whole music industry is supporting Black Lives Matter by not playing any music yesterday. So great, they're a show that does absolutely a live, well, a live recorded show, but a, a do new show every day. And it does air at a particular time But it didn't mean they didn't day. air, right? And right. so they that was a choice that many had to make yesterday. And um, I know she podcasts and a couple of other decided not to post at all yesterday. Um, so there are choices to be made and innovations to be had. But when your audience counts on you to show up consistently and constantly yeah. on time, that can be a detriment to your business when they say, wow, you're more worried about something else than you are worried about showing up for me. And so think about that. And, and I don't say that from doing it for one day is not going to hurt you. But if you were to do it like and shut down and not record anything during this whole COVID period, that would have been a shame for you not to show up for your audience because you were caught up in, in, you know, what's going on now, legitimately that people pod faded during that period because their children were home and they had to deal with homeschooling. They got sick. Or like their businesses got so negatively impacted that the lay people off would do a lot more work themselves. And again, be the chief everything officer when maybe they weren't. I mean, there are legit yeah. reasons why some people don't have enough bandwidth to do it maybe right. during this And time. our recommendation for that is to go on, do one single episode and explain that. Don't yep. pod fade and have people wondering what's going on with you. But if you tell me, if you came out and I was listening to your show and you told me I'm having a hard time and here's what's going on and I really hope I can come back to you because I love the podcast, but I can't. I've got to take care of my family. I've got to take care of my employees. I've got to take care of my business. I'm more likely to not unsubscribe you. I'm going to hang out and wait and see what happens, right? I'm going to actually be really eager when you come back to listen to that episode and find out what happened to you and what was the story during the whole time. So making sure that you're out there messaging about that is really technically important. But also keep in mind, if you go in an extended period of time without posting, without putting out blog posts, without doing this, without doing it in social media, the AI, the artificial intelligence, the bots that control your ranking, your authority, your value, and whether or not you get served up will be negatively affected if you are not consistent about what you go through and what you do. So keep that in mind that it does have a technical effect. So this is a really, an example outside of podcasting industry, but um, we used to work in the product industry. We support a lot of Amazon sellers. We support a lot of Amazon brands. And I had some conversations at top big brands who were choosing to send the limited inventory they had to Amazon and not to stores and not to their own website sales. So you would think, oh, I've got inventory. I, I should sell it on my website. I'll make more money. The margin will be there. It will be better for me. And instead, they made the choice to send the inventory to Amazon and make sure that their, their, their product never went out of stock on Amazon. That was critically important for them. Why? Because the minute they go out of stock, all the other, all the other products come in above them and it will take them three to four times the amount of money and effort and time to recover from an out of stock period of time. And that's all algorithm. There aren't people there making that choices. So using that as the example, the same thing happens on Apple podcasts, on their search engine, on their, on how they do it, on how they deal with subscribers. That's why we well, tell you and, not to go more than 30 days. how you chart, how right? you chart in your category, right? And you may never get back to where you were. You may get back to a new level, but you may never get back to where you were. So making this choice of be, of not podcasting or not publishing can have a long-term negative effect if you do it long-term, okay? So keep that in mind. One day is not going to change that. That That's no, one no, day no. is a blip, right. okay? Agreed. So want to be clear on that. So I just want to make sure that's our job is to protect you on the technical side and remind you that your decisions have technical consequences, the choices that you make in your strategy. So that's what we're here for. And right. well, do we have any questions? So now so we didn't gotta... record this as a podcast episode. I want to be really clear. We didn't set that out. Um, I don't we could know if, still publish it that I way. I don't if we know want, if we will but... do that. Um, we just felt that this was more strong and more important for us to be coaching with our clients and and, and taking care of you first and, in this process. So we haven't decided if we will use it at that. And you, you heard us, we didn't set that like, oh, and now welcome, welcome to Feed Your Brand. Right? Yeah, we didn't, do, we didn't that. do it that way here um, for that reason. 
we have some like a lot of things going on <laughs> so on our platform on other things so oh we gosh. can always talk about that too <laughs> so yeah so, so our the master class i want we should talk okay, about there talk let's about talk that. about that so the master class you can collect check it on replay it's about advanced tactics for referrals um and talking about lead referrals lead generation we have 21 different concepts to really think about and key factors different factors yeah yeah key factors to generating leads from your podcast and um and referrals from those podcast listeners from those clients that you may already have and so we use it the term clients throughout the 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 master class for a reason because we obviously want them to turn into business so they're not just but you can use that as a, a, you can drop in the word listener in that in your mind and start thinking about how do i get listeners to refer me right how do i get them to share my show it's the same thing referrals work in the same way so um i think it was really good um and we had a lot of great feedback and we had a lot of people i really i i enjoyed that master class i think it is very useful yeah and um, so our so goal is to bring you more of them out. and if you have a business that in any way would benefit from referrals it's probably worth your time yeah and we shared some insights into how our business works and how we use referrals and and what we how we apply them and um the power that they've had in growing our business over the last four years um, is tremendous. I mean, we can't thank all of you enough for referring us Absolutely. and that's how we've grown. Um, so yeah, so that's one, and we're going to do a pod to publish, um, to audiobook. Um, that's going to be in a couple of weeks. Um, you'll see advertisements. Uh, those are going to be on Tuesdays. Um, the, at, master the master classes are on Tuesdays at 1 PM Pacific time. Um, and so, but they're not every week. They're a couple of months is, uh, is what we're going to do here. And I, you know, I am thinking about having, um, uh, uh, Dr. Mark T. Wade come in and do um, a virtual summit masterclass I with think us. That'd be fantastic. And I, I think it would be fantastic for all of you as well. So I'm thinking yeah. about doing that. Um, and we may not get it organized this month, but I'll, I'll put it into next month for sure. Um, and then uh, we have, oh, uh, we're going to have Tracy DeForge come on at some point. To at some point. Our, yeah. Uh, we're working that out probably more in July, I think. Um, and let's see. Um, Social media masterclasses also... coming up. Yeah. And that's always a popular one. And we have been rebuilding, reprogramming from the ground up our podatized dashboard. Coding wise, we are oh, can't wait. <laughs> very close to testing that ourselves internally, uh, really just a week or two away from that. And then hopefully rolling it out to everybody in, um, you know, in the beginning of July. <laughs> when I was boy, talking to Mark on, really on the virtual summit, they're going through a technology shift as well. And both of us were like, God, it's so painful. Yeah, like, <laughs> and it takes so much longer than you think it's going to. So, look, I don't think anybody's going to really hold that against you if you publish on a day when others I think if you publish something publish. insensitive they would yeah, but you, you're course. you don't have an insensitive subject and you're not an insensitive insensitive person so I don't think that would ever happen when to you're anybody. showing up for your audience in an authentic way I mean I think it's fine I mean yeah there's nothing yeah wrong with I, that. I don't think you you need to feel bad about that you just need to do what you what's best for your business and what's best for your show and for the hard work you've been right. putting in over the months because that's a shame to let that that to let anything affect that and we made a calculated choice. We thought the majority of our customers would appreciate us continuing to show up for them and not, you know, pausing or delaying because of everything that was going on. Yeah. And, you know, think about it this way. The music industry makes a choice and they can make a choice because, I mean, look, they've gotten tons of plays. Their, their music consumption has grown over the last three months. Their business has been disrupted from cre on the creation side. So the creators are home, have a lot of time to think about what they're doing on social media and how they're presenting and what their messaging is and what they care about out there. But not everyone has that luxury. Many of us are like really, you know, in type business. We're really, we're really struggling day to day and we're really cranking it out and doing what we got to do. And so we got to show up and do that. And so it's a different choice to be made, right? Um, but at the same time, you think about that. What are some creative ways that I could um, support? If I want to support a mission, I want to support a messaging, I want to support Black Lives Matter, what could you do? So what I've been doing is I have pulled all of the Black podcasters who are featured on my podcast, which has been quite a quite a lot. And, um, and I had one interview I just did that I pushed her up in the schedule because I felt what her, she was podcasting about was critically important too. And because I also thought that she puts out a... Uh, a very smart and wonderful value-based view 
of a, a black woman in business. So I wanted her view to be heard because she's powerful and amazing. She amazed me. So, you know, and I talk to podcasters every day and every time I go talk to one and they amaze me, I want to share them more. So I move them up in my social media share schedule and my production schedule. Those are choices you can make to be better about supporting. If you haven't had enough, uh, black businesses represented in your podcast then get them represented that's you know do that yeah you that's a way help. you can do yeah. help support make it go out there um and as i said if you if your job is to support the the underlying fears the, the anger go and support that in whatever way you can all right well we hope this discussion was helpful thank you to those of you who were here live uh, for at least a portion of it if you and catch us on the replay and you yeah. have questions, don't forget to tag questions Tom and comments, I. We're happy yep. to answer them. We're happy to address them. And if we have to pop on and do a little short video to answer you, we will. So. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Keep podcasting. For more tips, tactics, and strategies, visit us online at podatize.com or on social at podatize. Thanks for exploring the power of podcasting and how to be seen, heard, found, and rewarded in our noisy digital world. Keep on podcasting.